Texas Senator Ted Cruz finds himself at the heart of a media firestorm. Critics determined to dismiss his chances and his candidacy, and tonight, right here, he responds. Welcome to The Kelly File, everyone. I'm Megan Kelly. It was early Monday morning. Senator Cruz first announced online and then told a jam-packed crowd at the Christian Liberty University that he is running for president. The first-term senator laid out a vision consistent with his conservative beliefs, and the media pounced, questioning him and his viability as a candidate. From the Washington Post, Ted Cruz, principled or smug know-it-all? In the New York Times, why Ted Cruz is such a long shot? And even overseas, Britain's The Guardian saying Ted Cruz is one U.S. presidential hopeful we can write off now. Thanks for that, Guardian. And that was nothing compared to what's been said on television. Watch. I think he's scary. I think he's dangerous. I think he's slimy. And well, I think he brings I'd no be, fresh new dangerous. ideas. I have a problem with Cruz because I've, I'm old enough to remember, even though I was a kid, what McCarthy was all about. Right. Now, he was Mr. Division. He accused people of being communists. Here's this character accusing Chuck Hagel of taking 200 k from the North Koreans, accusing Obama, the president of the United States, of being under communist influence because he went to Harvard Law. And in your short time in the Senate, you've developed a reputation as a guy who does not back down, who will not compromise. Will you bring that brand of no compromise to the White House if you're elected? How are you with that hardline conservative message going to appeal to moderates and independents? Joining me now, Texas Senator and presidential candidate Ted Cruz. Scary, dangerous, and slimy. The Guardian declaring you are done 48 hours after you have declared. And to that you say... Well, look, there, there's nothing, nothing like the warm embrace of, of the mainstream media. And, and, and I have to say, <laughs> I, I think one of my favorite comments was the New York Times said in, in, in the last day that Cruz cannot be nominated because the Washington elites hate him. And I have to admit, my immediate thought was, holy cow, do I have to disclose that to the Federal Elections Commission right, as in. an in-time kind contribution? I mean, I can't think of a better summary of why I'm running. If, if you're looking for a candidate embraced by the Washington political elite, I ain't your guy. Mm -hmm. but, what, but what about the Wall Street Journal? Because they're not exactly left-wing pundits. And they came out this morning with a piece comparing you to then-Senator Obama, suggesting, as Charles Krauthammer did, we've already tried the one-term senator thing, and in their view, it didn't work out so well. Well, look, there have been a lot of folks throw, throwing that attack, and, and, and I've got to say there are marked differences between my background and Barack Obama's. We're both first-term senators. Both went but, to Harvard. Uh, we both went to Harvard, but there are marked differences. In his time in the Senate, he was basically a backbencher. He did not lead on any issues of real significance. In my time in the Senate, there are a lot of faults I have, but nobody would accuse me of being a backbencher. What I've tried to do is lead on the great challenges of the, the, the day, whether it's stopping Obamacare or stopping the out-of-control debt or stopping executive amnesty or defending our constitutional rights or standing with Israel or stopping Iran from getting nuclear weapons. But secondly, Megan, unlike Barack Obama before the Senate, I wasn't a community organizer. I spent five and a half years as the Solicitor General of Texas, the chief lawyer for the state, leading the state in, in appeals before the U.S. Supreme Court, leading every appeal for a 4,000-person agency, over 700 lawyers, and over and over again, we led and won national conservative fights, defending the Ten Commandments and winning, defending the Pledge of Allegiance and winning, defending the Second Amendment and winning. But on your time in the Senate, this is what some of your critics point to. They say, yes, you've led the fight on certain issues, but what have you actually accomplished? What we've accomplished over and over again, in many instances, is stopping bad things from happening. Remember the beginning of the second term of Obama? We had the horrible shooting in Sandy Hook. And, and President Obama didn't come out and say, let's go target violent criminals, which is what he should have, should have done and how we could have brought together bipartisan agreement. Instead, he used it as an excuse to go after law-abiding citizens. And much of Washington was consigned, we can't stop this, the train is moving, getting, get on board. I did everything I could to energize and mobilize the grassroots, mm -hmm. to stand up and protect the Second Amendment. And every single proposal of Barack Obama to undermine the Second Amendment was voted down on the Senate floor. But how do you, you know, when, you, when you're the leader, when you're the mm -hmm. president, you have to bring coalitions together mm -hmm. to get things through. You can't just be a, a, you know, somebody who stops things. You actually have to get, get, be somebody who gets things through. Well, you've got to do both. You know, it's interesting. In the last two years, 
virtually nothing past the Senate. Harry Reid and the Democrats basically shut the Senate down. But as a freshman senator, I had more legislation pass the Senate than all but a handful of Republicans. For example, when Iran named Hamida Boudalabi, a known terrorist, to be their ambassador to the United Nations. He had participated in holding Americans hostage. Almost everyone in Washington wrung their hands and said, there's nothing we can do. I filed legislation to block Abu Dhabi and other known terrorists from coming to this country. It passed the Senate 100 to nothing. It passed the House of Representatives 435 to nothing. And President Obama signed it into law. And not, not only that, but you can say Hamida Boudalabi, just like it's like it just flows <laughs> off the tongue. Just, you should get points for that, too. Uh, you know, for my daughters, that's a good tongue twister. Uh, I, I mean, for all of us, it's amazing. And, and I should say, <laughs> Senator Cruz's wife and his two beautiful daughters are here in the studio, and it's been a very long day for you. Uh, so I apologize for bringing up Rand Paul in front of them because they may be up against each other. Uh, but he was on the program last night, as yeah. you know, and he... He likes you and said he doesn't disagree with you on, on most things. But he said, I'm sort of, this is, I'm paraphrasing, I'm kind of like the Ted Cruz who can win, <laughs> who can appeal to a, broad, a broader group. And we're hearing that more and more. You know, Can you appeal beyond the conservative base, as the Wall Street Journal again this morning points out, citing GOP pollster, uh, uh, hold on, Ayers, who says, even if the GOP nominee in 2016 carries the same share of the white and the minority vote as George W. Bush did in 2004, he would lose and handily. You need to expand the coalition. Well, uh, let me say a couple of things on that. Number one, listen, Rand Paul, I like Rand Paul. He's a friend of mine. I respect him. We fought side by side for liberty. We'll keep fighting side by side for liberty. Uh, you know, what I can tell you, when I got elected to the Senate from Texas, we saw a coalition come together. We reassembled the Reagan coalition. We brought together conservatives and libertarians and evangelicals and women and young people, and Hispanics and Reagan Democrats. But they, all those people are now being told that you're scary, dangerous, and slimy. I mean, but, this is what but, you're but, up against. But, but they were told that in the Texas Senate race, too. And you know, in Texas, I won 40% of the Hispanic vote at the same time that Mitt Romney was getting clobbered with 27% of the Hispanic vote Now they vote say you nationwide. can't win the Hispanic vote because of your tough stance on immigration. What do you say to that? Uh, well, listen, when I ran for Senate in Texas, I was unequivocally against amnesty. I think there's a lot of bipartisan agreement. We got to secure the borders, we should reject amnesty, and we should improve and streamline legal immigration. There's no greater advocate of legal immigration in the Senate than I am. But I'll tell you, Megan, if you want a quick indication of the support we're seeing, the incredible grassroots support, it's been 36 hours since we launched the campaign. In the first day, over 140,000 people have come to our website, tedcruz.org. Mm -hmm. In the first day, we've raised over $1 million in one day on the campaign. I thought it was half a million. It's gone up to a million. Well, the now? number that was reported half a million was only halfway through the day. It's been wow. a million bucks in the wow. first day. Now, all of the talking heads in Washington say Cruz can't raise money because the, the big lobbyists in Washington aren't with him. He opposes corporate welfare. He opposes all of the crony capitalism. Our campaign is based on courageous conservatives across this country, men and something. women going to tedcruz.org and contributing, and, and that's where we're getting the support. Joining me now with Reaction, Fox News senior political analyst, Britt Hume. Britt, it's been basically a day of interviews for him now. How's he doing? He's doing fine. What he said about fundraising, I don't doubt for a second. This is the man who really excites the most conservative element of the Republican Party, possibly more than any other candidate. And I think he will be able to raise a lot of money, not necessarily from the big money donors, but from a lot of small contributions, and he will have a foothold in the race. You, you, he was asked repeatedly today whether he's too conservative to win, which is interesting because nobody's going to ask Hillary or Elizabeth Warren, for that matter, whether they're too liberal to win. Um, but he does need to expand the coalition that George W. Bush won with if he wants to become president. Can he do that? Well, the first thing he's got to do is get nominated, and it is widely said, Megan, you hear it all the time, that the, that the most conservative part of the Republican Party is the base. If that were true, then the nominees the last several times out wouldn't have been who they were. Bob Dole couldn't have gotten nominated. I'm not sure George W. Bush could have gotten nominated. John McCain couldn't have gotten nominated, and Mitt Romney couldn't have either. Mm -hmm. Only a couple of times over the past half century and more, the Republicans nominated their most conservative, least well-known nominee. That's how Ronald Reagan was and Barry Goldwater was, but not since that, not, not since Reagan, and and not between uh, Goldwater and Reagan. So. 
uh, when you think about the base, you got to think about uh, uh, large elements of the party that Ted Cruz, to some extent, will have to make peace with if he's going to get the nomination. But think about the, the Little, strategy. The general election, I think, is a whole other matter. The Guardian declaring you are done 48 hours after you have declared, and to that you say, well, look, there, there's nothing, nothing like the warm embrace of, of the mainstream media, and, and, and I have to say. <laughs> That was Senator Ted Cruz on The Kelly File last night. I asked him about his welcome from the mainstream media, which many have since noticed is very different from that that was given to then-Senator, now-President Barack Obama, when he first announced his run for the White House. Joining me now to discuss it, Mark Thiessen, Fox News contributor and former presidential speechwriter for George W. Bush, and Katrina Pearson, former congressional candidate and Tea Party member who has worked for Senator Cruz. So let me start with you on it, Mark. Um, that, that when Barack Obama announced he was running, I mean, the Washington Post, they were so excited. They talked about how no matter what your political leanings are, you're likely to feel at least a twinge of excitement about him. But they didn't really feel that. The twinge about running up your leg, as Chris, uh, Chris Matthews had. Yeah, look, um, I mean, the left wing commentators have been having a field day with, with, with Ted Cruz's announcement, but it's not just the commentators, it's the straight reporting news media. Let me read you what the New York Times said about Ted Cruz's announcement. This is how they reported it Mr. Cruz, a first term senator, is seen by Republicans and Democrats alike as a divisive figure. His tenure in Washington has been marked by accusations of demagoguery. That's the news story. Now, here's how the New York Times reported Barack Obama's announcement in 2007 on its front page. Same, same newspaper. Obama's launching a journey rich with historic possibilities and symbolism. Speaking smoothly and comfortably, Mr. Obama offered a generational call to arms, portraying his campaign less as a candidacy and more as a movement. These are this is these guys are very similar in a lot of ways, but if, the, if you the could, if you embrace of the mainstream the, media hasn't been the same. If you listen for the audio tape to that New York Times story, it ended with "Hail to the Chief," which was really like the one-two <laughs> punch, really helped him out. So, Katrina, let me let me ask you: um, You would think that the you know the, a publication like the Times would be celebrating. I mean, he would be the first Latino president ever, the same as Barack Obama is the first black president ever, and I don't really feel that when I read the coverage. No, there is hypocrisy, but first let me say I never worked for the senator, but I have been one of his big volunteers since the beginning. And here's the thing, over the last two years, liberals and Democrats have been championing people coming across our borders, and they say it's they want a better life. They're fleeing tyranny. They're fleeing oppression. And here you have a man that is a walking testament to immigrants who have fled their countries to seek freedom and have achieved the American dream. Megan. Where is the outrage? Mm -hmm. And what about, here, here's some outrage for you. Over on another cable station today, Mark, this is how she's apparently the editor of Ebony magazine, uh, described Cruz's statement about how he came to love country music after 9-11 because he liked the messaging he heard in country music. And here was her response. Nothing says, let's go kill some Muslims like country music. <laughs> fresh, from, <laughs> fresh from Lynchburg, Virginia. <laughs> Someone who obviously does not want to be a polarizing candidate no. to bring people together. Obviously. I mean, really? I mean, it, 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 that's absurd. Something's absurd, all right. So absurd that that network then had to come on the air a couple breaks later and apologize for her remarks, which I have yet to see her do. I think more people just saw it now when you broadcasted it than when it was originally broadcast. But uh, look, I mean, li liberal attacks like this help Ted Cruz. I mean, the me America hates Washington and Washington hates Ted Cruz. So that that's that's not going to hurt him in any way to have MSNBC commentators attacking him. The difference, though, that he has to contend with is that unlike Barack Obama, he's taking friendly fire. A lot of the criticism of him is coming from the right. Uh, you, it's one thing to have the Washington Post and the New York Times editorial page criticizing you. It's another thing to have the Wall Street Journal editorial page uh, saying that you're a polarizing yeah, figure. Yeah, but you know, and they Katrina, the response to that is that those are mainstream sort of yesteryear Republicans and not true conservatives. Well, and that's true, Megan. It is some of the old school, the good old boy network and so on. But what they fail to realize and why it's happening from the right and the left is that Ted Cruz actually can bring people together. He did it in Texas. I was with him in the beginning when he was negative in the polls and told, you guys are working for a candidate. It's never going to happen. And guess what? We went out there. and He went and talked to the American public, bypassing the mainstream media as well as the establishment. And the senator can sell freedom and freedom is a winning message. What do you like best about yourself that makes you think that you could hold this job of president? I, 
I love the Constitution and I am fighting for freedom. I mean, I wake up every day, I jump out of bed. I cannot tell you how thrilled I am because this country is in crisis. Mm -hmm. And what an incredible privilege to be in the arena. I look at my I, little I girls. Think, uh, you say it's a privilege. I think you have to be a little nuts. I mean, you have to be a little nuts to want this job.